A maid is like the golden ore which hath guineas in principal hint, whose worth is never known before it is tried and impressed in the mint. A wife's like a guinea in gold, stamped with the name of her spouse. Now here, now there is bought or is sold, and is cut in memory house. Oh, come in the filth. <laughs> oh, 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 I'm as fond of this child as though my mind misgave me. He were my own. He had as fine a hand for picking a pocket as a woman and is as nimble-fingered as a juggler. Oh, filch. If an unlucky session doth not cut <coughs> the rope of thy life, I pronounce, boy, thou wilt be a great man in history. Where was your post last night, my boy? I applied it to the opera, madam. Oh, yeah. I mean, considering it was neither dark nor rainy, so that there was no great hurry in getting chairs and coaches, well, I made a tolerable hand on These seven handkerchiefs, man. Oh, coloured ones, I see. These are of sure sale from our warehouse at Red Riff among the seamen. And this snuff box. Set in gold. <laughs> <laughs> a pretty encouragement, this, for a young beginner. I had a fair chuck at a charming gold watch. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, well, pox take the tailors for making a fob so deep and narrow. Oh. I stuck by the way and I was forced to make my escape under a coach. Oh. Really, madam, I fear I shall be cut off in the flower of my youth. So that every now and then I've had thoughts of taking up and going to sea. No. No, you should go to the Hockley in the Hole and to Mary Boat Child to learn valour. These are the schools that have bred so many brave men. Well, I thought by this time, boy, thou hadst lost fear as well as shame. Poor lad, how little doth he as yet know of the old Bailey. For the first fact, I'll ensure thee from being hanged, and going to see Filch will come time enough upon a sentence of transportation. But now, since you've nothing better to do, go to your book and learn your catechism. For really, a man makes but an ill figure in the ordinary's paper who cannot give a satisfactory answer to his questions. But ask you, my lad, don't tell me a lie. For you know I hate a liar. Do you know of anything that hath passed between Captain McKeith and our Polly? I beg you, madam, don't ask me. For I must either tell a lie to you or to Miss Polly, and I promised her I would not tell. But where the honour of our family is concerned... I shall lead a sad life for Miss Polly if ever she comes to know that I told you. Besides, I would not willingly forfeit my own honour by betraying anybody. Yonder comes my husband and Polly. Come filch with me to my own room. And tell me the whole story. I'll give thee a glass of the most delicious cordial that I keep for my own drinking. Come on. 